G'day and welcome. So you may remember, it was August 2017, I had a deal with Dave Raymakers, a friend of mine. He would do a whole lot of repairs to a little Toyota Starly, daily drive that I've got, uh, in return for me doing a bunch of repairs on his bike. Now, it didn't work out that way. He ended up doing a heap more work on the Starlet than what we initially intended. And we changed the engine and did all sorts of bits and pieces on it. And he even went and removed the engine in the NG for me and a few other bits and pieces on that. And so he went kind of above and beyond. And I restored this XL250, which looked the part. It looked really good. But it had noise in the engine and we it was, a, it was a disappointing experience. Now, got it finished March 18 and took it to a little car show around the corner. And yeah, it was good. But it made this noise. And it had me a bit baffled what the noise was because I'm used to car engines. I'm not a, I'm not a bike mechanic. So I, I know a bit about the old car engines, but you know, some of the bike stuff's a lot more complicated and a lot more intricate, if you know what I mean. So, kind of felt deflated about it, and he did too. Um, I, he did all this lovely work for me, and I've been driving the little Starly around, and you know, the MG and this sort of stuff, and enjoying that, and he's stuck with a bike with no engine in it, because we did take the engine out soon after that. And a bunch of parts came up as being a little bit um, suspect. So they were given to a specialist um, from a specialist bike shop who knew what the issues were. The only problem was the specialist had no time constraint and so he, he took a year to do these things, to do these repairs. And so <laughs> we got the parts back, I'm going to say the other day, and we got the bike finished today. And it's nearly two years to the day. It's, uh, what was it, August 2017 we started, now we're in July 2019. So it's taken a little while, but the victory is pretty damn sweet. Now, I feel great about it, Dave does too. There's a couple of teething issues. The clutch feels a little bit heavy, and he thinks it might be in the cable, but the cable's new. I'm thinking it might be in the cover, don't know. And it'll need an oil change too, because uh, you know after you start running for a bit, you want to get that stuff changed out. So, people that are interested in the Sigma videos, that's all finished as well. Haven't got the paperwork back from the club. They've sent it, but it's in the post somewhere. And I really need that back because the only good day for shooting a last video is Friday, uh, day after tomorrow, and I don't think I'm going to get it by then, or at least not ready by then anyway. So the rest of the time on these holidays I've just been trying to clean up to make room for the MG, which is coming back. So anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this. I've certainly enjoyed it with Dave today. We spent another day on it today and got it knocked out. The first half of the video was, or the first 20 minutes or so, I think was shot about a year ago. Um, but it's just been sitting on the desktop of my computer until I was ready to use it, of course. That's now. So I hope you enjoy. So we did Dave's bike car, and it's disappointing because there was a noise in the engine. It just wasn't right. Now it does turn over well. But it's got a heck of a, maybe we can do it the other way, it's got a heck of a knock in it. So I'll tell you what it should do there. Let's take the top off. Well, that all looks good. It's turning nicely. I just don't get that noise. I don't understand it. I thought the rod might be bent, but I don't think it is. Not the foggiest or what I'm going to do. So we just keep pulling it apart until we find out what's wrong. The shaft looks good. Just not really sure what the problem is. Let me try and remember how to get this out. That all looks good. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's perfect. Well, we keep investigating until we find the culprit. What I will say though is there's a bit of sludge that's worked its way around the system. So something's definitely not right. The oil's nice and clear, but there's a residue sitting in there as well. But I'd like to know what that is. Right, get the head off. And. Let me have a look. 
Oh, that was good. The head was done up, anyhow. And I can't see anything that would denote an issue. Let me just turn this around a sec. The tensioner is new on stock and it's perfect, which is good. I'm wearing secondhand gloves because of my 350 painting today. Let's have a look at this. I'm looking here at the Pistonian. So we'll turn you now, raise you up. Do you want to go up a bit? Uh, here we go. There we are. Sweet. All right, what if I zoom in a bit? Is that better? It looks better to me. Anyhow, I have to wear or use this. And I'm just looking around the top of the piston just to see if there's been any evidence whatsoever of hitting and there's not. It's absolutely perfect, which is good. Uh, except I'll drop the timing chain. Just give me a moment. We always uh, wear fresh gloves when we're doing engines. We're pulling it apart. I don't really care. I'm just going to raise that up a bit and give you a bit of a spin over and take a look at the boring. Um, and it looks like it is fine. Um, bloody hell, what is the problem? I thought it might be sort of going down one side of it. And, you know, you can see where the rings have been. It's scraped a bit, but... Probably scraped too much for the fact that it hasn't been run much, but I just don't freaking know. It's probably all I've had about, had about an hour's running. Time to pop the barrel, I think. Right. All the lubricating things there, the lubrication of the top end's fine. That's the gasket I made, the copper one, to space it, but that was only really a band aid. I'm not convinced that was the right thing to do, but I thought it might prevent the noise, but we've got nothing wrong there. It's just a touch the bore, but... It's got wear marks already in it, very faint ones, but... I thought the rod might have been broken, or bento, and I don't think it is. And that's moving in there very well, so still not knowing. What I do know though is it's not hitting, so it's nothing to do with 90% of the problems these bloody things have got in that they hit. So that's not that's not the problem. There's no no, there's no movement there. There's side to side, which you expect. I've got absolutely no problem in the world putting a rod kit in it. I just, want to make, I just want to make sure that's what the problem is. Right, this is the sort of stuff I'm talking about. The grey matter on the bottom. Sludgy stuff. I don't know if you can see there on the cardboard where I'm wiping it. That looks like it shouldn't be there. <laughs> now, this is as far as I've stripped this engine down. I, I'll take that off. Then I took this off here. But I'd never separated the cases. And I'm thinking maybe I should have, because I'm not sure that the problem lies with something that we did. I think it's something that was inside before. Um, I don't know. It doesn't matter anyway. Look at this stuff. I mean, there's absolutely loads of crud in the bottom. Now, I pulled that strainer out and I cleaned it, um, and it was spotless. Let me pop this strainer out here. That's not good. Uh, what have you got? All sorts of debris in there, metal filings included. That's really bad. All we're going to do now is find the evidence of where that came from. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. We just have to keep digging. Really keep digging. It's not up there. So this is where we have to put our little detective hats on. That is knackered up. Right. Um, I'm just taking this off. I don't think I took this off last time. Need to have a look at clutch plates. Make sure there's nothing coming under suspicion there. 
So I'm going to take these off. I'm filthy. All this stuff has to be cleaned again properly. Just to make sure there's no fibery crap or anything like that. And I think we looked at this last time and it all looked fairly good. Or at least there wasn't any obvious problems with it. But whatever it is should be jumping out of us. And so far it isn't. I can't see anything. Uh, this side of... No, we didn't take this apart. Why did not I take that apart? I think he said the clutch was fine. But I didn't take this apart. I don't think I had this whole clutch basket off. I don't remember having it off. Um, yeah, I can clean those up, but there's nothing coming off them. There's no issue with that, with those at all. And also in here, in the basket, there's nothing there. There's nothing on the back. There's nothing on the teeth. It is absolutely perfect. So I guess we just keep going. This is an important piece, this one. Hang on. I haven't got a good purchase on it. Oil transfers through that. I'm calling it a spring. Hang on a minute. I'll take the timing chain off. Just a moment. Right. Anything out of the ordinary there. Some teeth have been crashing. Yeah, we did take this off. We did, we did, we did. Um, the teeth are damaged there. But that's not what the issue is, I don't think. Let me just pop that back. There's the dog there. I don't think that's the problem though. I think we are going to be separating cases and having a big a bit of a sniff inside. Because there's just nothing screaming out at me. Yeah, I don't think that's going to tell us anything. I reckon maybe that is it. How much clearance? There should be a speck. I can stick a feeler gauge down there and check. I was going to get one anyway and I'll see how much play there's there. That was a seven thousandth gauge. Six is um quite slack in there, very slack in there, eight is, eight will just go in, so it'd be about seven thousandths clearance there, even though it seems a little magnify as you get toward the top if you look there, but I don't think that's it, I don't really think that's it at all, as long as I've gone here this way, look I think the only thing we're going to be able to do is split him, let's see what the hell we can find, because at the moment I've got Zippo, Time to split these cases and how the hell's that come out? Oh dear, never done this before, so we're learning. Oh, there's a tensioner I didn't know about. Hang on a minute, there's a bloody tensioner. I think I was supposed to take the um <laughs> I think I was meant to take that off and I didn't. So what we need to do is that drenched with oil probably. I'll take that out and then I'll be able to get the chain out. It just means I'm going to have to pop that off too. Um, I'll do this. That's a little bouncy shaft. I'll put this over here somewhere. I'll stick it there. Uh, what do we got? Bounce shaft chain. The cranks are there, I'm interested in. Then this guy. And whatever else is going on inside. Uh, where's my magnet? I want to see... God, this is a mess. I want to see... Because I never separated them before. Everything looks alright there. A lot of sludge down there. And it's just... Ugh, it's horrible. So I think we need to clean up a bit. I'm going to hydroblast these too. These bloody cases because it's just a mess. It's an absolute mess. Not a bad idea. Might pop another chain on too. Right. So we've got the engine all apart. We've got these little keepers the same as the 750 so I need to keep an eye on those. 
There's three of them. One, two, and three. Gear sets. Beautiful. If you pull that seal out a bit, you can hear. Well, you can't hear. They're really, really quiet. Beautiful. There's a needle roller bearing in there. Absolutely perfect. No teeth missing. Nothing wrong with that. Same with this one here. Uh, bearing's beautiful. Silent, silent, silent. Needle roller's good. The only criticism I'd have is I think that chain was a bit stretched. So I might have to get a timing chain. Oh, sorry, a balance shaft chain for it. Now, top and bottom cases, all good. Balance shaft seems to be moving properly. There's not a problem with any of that stuff. All the gear shift mechanism, everything's fine. There's nothing at all wrong. The problem is the knock we had. The only thing I can come up with is this. Now, I measured this, seven thousandths. It's moving like that. It's not moving like that. Which makes me believe that there is some wear on that pin, on that lower pin. When you get a Conrod kit for these, uh, they do come with a pin as well. That being said, if I pull it to and fro, up and down, I can't feel anything. And on the 500 inch and he's got it, it's really slack, so I know that needs a, a kit putting in it. So that's it for this one. I need to do some homework. Right, 750 back wheel. We're in a bit of a pickle because I can't find that rim. 17 inch, 40 spoke for CB750, K7 and K8. Guy I thought supplied them, or at least did supply them last year, doesn't get them anymore. Rusty in here, so I'm gonna have to get their re-craned. Uh, get this bike mobile under this tarp. Um, because the Raymakers Workshop's been sold, and there's a settlement date on it, which means EMG's gonna have to come back here, and I've just got crap everywhere. That fan can go in the bin. And there's a whole lot of junk over here now. Stuff that I don't use. There's a Starlet gearbox and a little Starly engine under there and XY hubcaps and all sorts of things that I'm not using now which can get stored in the shed and a lot of stuff in the shed can get thrown out. So we've got to make some storage room for this and there you can see there's just crap everywhere. Now a lot of this stuff isn't stuff I'd throw out. There's airbag modules and seatbelts in there and just all sorts of bits and pieces. There's also stuff here, 351 crank and it'll rock intake, all these sorts of things that I wouldn't dare throw out. But there is some stuff that I can. Um, and so what I need to do is work out a viable way of cleaning all this up. Now, in the meantime, I have to get this rim off. I'm not going to go into it because I've done the lacing on the other videos. I've just got to find where the valve is, which is here, and take a little reminder video of how it all goes together. Strip that, get that down to the chromers and then go to Scotty's to get it um, trued and the, the tie put on. With any project that's in bits, like the XC at the moment, the two guards in there take an awful lot of room in the shed, and also this boot lid, which I was going to have done this year, but I never got round to it, or at least have it done last summer and I never got round to it. Keep taking on other projects, which is not that wise. Dave's XL motor, which all the bits are in a box behind the boot and I need to get that together. The crank was supposed to be ready last Friday and I haven't heard anything back. And of course we've got CB350 engine bits there and also over on the other side of the garage which I need to also uh, get sorted. So I'm going to be spending a bit of time doing a clean up and there's not going to be an awful lot in terms of content for you but I need to go through this in order to create content. Okay so we've got uh, Dave's motorcycle engine here. This is the X L engine which we're going to be revisiting. Um, rebuilt crankshaft, I found all sorts of problems with the crank, there was run out in it and there was also the timing gear was on backwards. I wonder if that rod was bent and clutch pack versus the cylinder head. The barrel's all been redone, been reboard. there's another piston for it. And the side covers, I'll get them, they were painted, I painted those, I'm going to get them hydro, gaskets and oil and all that sort of stuff. So we can stick that together tomorrow. Now, 750 rim is stripped, ready off to go off to chrome. Putting this XL250 engine together and a few headaches. But we're figuring out the belt shafts. So there's a casting mark there, which that lines up against there. Here. And we've got a new chain, new everything in this. The crank's been all redone, the timing gear was on the wrong side. And the thing that's a real pain in the neck. Okay, so we've got a mark here. We've got a balance shaft edge of the weight that lines up with that guy, and then this one lines up with a mark on the sprocket, the forward most sprocket. Now, what's difficult with this, we've got to put this guide in here. So we've got to withdraw that, 
You've got to push that through, drop tension off the sprocket, put the guide in, and then thread that through from this side here. So it's a pain in the back side. There's that mark there. Okay, let me see if the camera's only focus, but yeah. So we've been sitting here spending about an hour and a half trying to figure out this whole thing. All the while, there's these keepers on the inside there. With those, oh, I can't even see it. <laughs> Oh, look, they just are, right? <laughs> to stop that separating, there's another keeper in there that has to move over into the right spot. Bit of a headache, but it's rewarding when you figure it out. So, it's going to be all brand new. This is taking a day. <laughs> oh, it's taking an afternoon. So, it's been reboard. Um, what did you bore it? A mill. Yeah. So, that's all looking good. I thought it looked all right before, but there was a little bit of piston slab. Don't, yeah, we don't need to do it. So I just put the barrel on. Felt like it had a bit of grit almost. I'll well, just get a... Right, I'll just get that. Oh yeah, it does a bit, doesn't it? It feels a little bit tight. Yeah, oh, that's alright, that's good. Mm. That's excellent. It is. So I'll just feed that through. So I've got all the timing set up for the... I'm going to turn the camera around. I can't even see what I'm looking at in here. It's in there somewhere. Can you see it? Looks yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah you got to kind of push that yeah, little thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty happy with that. Yeah. Hmm. So I got these back from the blaster and they're dirty because I've been re sort of reassembling all the mechanisms and so forth inside with dirty hands. But a bit of thinner and that'll all come off. Um, Dave can ultimately decide to use thinner or solvent, maybe even a rag with some light machine oil or whatever. That'll keep them clean. And um, I just think it's better off being sort of bare aluminium than uh, painted. <laughs> Such technique. Why well, use that one? Use the sick round one. Try that. That one just wrecks your fingers. Oh, this is a dodgy one. What, the ratchet or the bolt? Oh, the ratchet's a ripper. Look at that. Yeah, the other one's an Audi one. It's squeezing out, so that's all right. So we're nearly ready to put it in. Yep. It's all looking good. Ah, we need another bowl. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Are we comfortable? We're comfortable. She's going to run. She's going to run. All right, so we've got it all done. Looking rather spiffy. Uh, so I guess we'll just take it to the workshop and stick it in. See what happens, eh? Pretty convinced it's all good. Anyway, we'll load them up and turn this thing on when we get to the workshop. All ready to go? And this bike, which we're here to do now. Check this out. This is a cracker. You never see them like this anymore. Let's see if we can get in. He's got the engine out of it. It's like a full camper and everything. Still in excellent condition. What happened to the engine? It seized, did it? Piston and ring were in the inlet manifold. Oh, cool. So I think it more than seized and self destructed. So it was rooted. Yeah. Anyway, so lunch. Let's go with lunch. It's going to have a hungry Jack's engine in it. Yes. Mm. Lots of um, killer jewels there. Yeah. <laughs> Should smoke the back tire with all them killer jewels. Yeah, that's right. And uh, although, did you read the paper? A guy ate a gecko and got salmonella poisoning and died. The poor thing. Really? Yeah. What did he a gecko? It was a dare, I think. Yeah, it's got to go through there. Yeah, so, well, why don't we just pop them off again, the 12s? 12s. I think that goes... 
Where's the... Yeah, this side. Yeah. Oh, it goes like that. Yeah. So, it's just easier just to undo that. Just give us, give us a 10 mil opening though. and thread them through there because we forgot because we've got limit and that one goes over here let's get another one to hold that I'll do it on the other side I'll get this glass to go on the other side over here Cool. Just put that Kick wire in there. The Kickstarter's in the box here. Yeah. We'll leave the airbox up for now until we start it. Yeah. And what about the other rear brake attached? Kickstarter. I guess start working with these headers. They're a prick, those things too. What angle do we put this about there? Oh no. <laughs> I reckon it's going to go through here because yeah. these before. Oh, right. Right, this was me. through here before. Yeah. And so was, yes, it was. So was this one. Here. So was this one. I can't remember tucking that anywhere. No, there's a bracket here that holds it. Yeah, so we've got this wire here. It's got to come that way somehow. That one's uh, there. So, okay, so it's good. So, so we've still got this one off the. Now, this makes life a lot easier. Alright, so that goes in there. Hey, four turns of shit. I'm spunk like that from tight. <laughs> yep, thank you, mate. So that goes in there. Oh, that makes more sense. That's it. So you just got to. Where's the other one? The other male yeah. bit or female bit? Right. Can that go? Do we want it? No, because it won't be long that I can go. But you know what? Hang on. No, I'll give you more because that goes in there. Yeah, they're all lined up. That's how they're meant to be. Sweet. Alright, so the only one left now is that stray one that went into the black one. Yeah, which is which, around. Which is on your which side. So I'm going in the frame. I don't think. Oh, yeah. yeah that'll work. That'll do. Oh, that works on this side. It all looks really cozy on this side. So, oh, hang on. The clutch cable and exhaust. So oh. this one here, I suppose there's still got enough length to cable tie yeah, that yeah, to yeah. there. What about here? Just got a, is that that one? Just got a clutch cable. Twelve. No, no, I've got it. Oh, the rig's going to be done. Is that battery still got any juice in it? Hopefully. Sweet! Alright, oh hang on, that's a cubby overflow there, isn't it? Well we need that. You won't be able to talk, it's up to me. Hang on, okay. Fuck me more. No, I was thinking why are we... What do you mean? I don't even see it again. What? Well, it's oh, like no fuel, yes, so yes, the yes, yes. floating yes, down. Yes, yes. I'm a dickhead, that's on camera. <laughs> you are a dickhead, no, says I reckon. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, right, I reckon you can do a Yep, stick that blasted in. Over the board. So it should be around this one. Yeah, but I'm also going to try and line these bolts up. None of this. Uh, oh, hang on, you've got to put, just stick these two tens in the top there. Yeah, <laughs> and this bracket's moved. What? This ten in there. Which one? Oh, the bolt on one. This bracket. Why well, is that all in the wrong spot now? Can we make this bracket? Which one? No, that's genuine. Why doesn't it fit anywhere? Hang on, it's going to go up higher. 
Because these things need to crush. Yeah. Ah, oh, they're just so they should just sit in there. You got the gaskets in? Yeah. That's what. <laughs> that's why they're sitting out. They just yeah. pricks these things. So yeah. So yeah. See, they don't. They go the other way. They. No, is yeah. they go down there? Do they? Yeah. I'm sure they do. See yeah. when they go up there. Because you've got nothing to hang on to. Because that is the same way that. That. That's how I thought that went. Oh, you reckon they go? Oh, okay. Oh, I'm pretty sure. You're probably right. Pretty sure they go like that. Pretty sure they go. Probably the same reason I can't get this together. Are you sure, Dave? No, I'm not sure. Because they don't seem to sit properly. I'm going to do what you said to start with. I'm just going to try and zap them up. I think they go the other way because... Where's that cord? Well, they, they flared in, they bent the other way, so I reckon they were in the wrong. Well, that was me. And one of my brothers. You might be right, sir. Oh, I had the club last night. They had a couple of speakers from the MG Car Club. Mm -hmm. These guys took their friggin' MGs the same as mine. All around the bloody world, they drive to Argentina, Chile. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't even take Michael Freud. It's like, not making it. <laughs> it's like, these guys are driving, oh, Russia, England, you name it, they're driving around in these things, a crew of about six or eight of them. I could not believe it. I was actually gobsmacked that they made it. Alright, moment of truth. Let's give it a kick in the guts and see what happens. Eh? Again, we need some ignition, some choke, our fuel's on. Hopefully it doesn't fall on me. Yeah, we need nothing on here. It's unusual, yeah? Yeah. yeah. You put it in gear, but there's no chain on it.
Sounds really good actually, isn't it? Yeah. Just a tap. So we can check the sound if it is any of them. Far too tall, so we've shortened it up a bit, which is better for road trail apparently. <coughs> That's all good. All good there. Just the other side. Yeah, I'll give it the mandatory white. Yeah, oh, it's sitting on a couple of. I'm going to move the kit starter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it looked too far, man. Started. Had to adjust the handlebars because the straps had pulled them down a bit. Put them out there. Yeah, about there. Whatever's comfortable. Look at the bee's knees. Been a bit of a long job this one. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's my apprenticeship in motorbikes. And mine. Yeah. Mine. Oh, you've been working on bikes for a while. This is just a really, really complex little thing, that's all. The engine. You know, we thought we had it right with a bit of a re-ring job and a new piston, but no end of freaking issue. We should have just done it right the first time, I guess, which is a full rebuild. So it's had everything done. Okay, now we're going to start it and try riding it. I hope I don't fall off. No, you'll be right. Do you want to move your toolbox? No. no. I want to hear what it's like when you put the load on it. There, there you go. Didn't like the load. Probably should let it 
put in gear. Finally done. We can't show you the riding footage because we took it to a specialist motorcycle park to ride it around. <laughs> and it looks absolutely brilliant. It's been a lot of work, but I learned a lot from it and I'd do it again. He's getting his mates to come up and have a look now. which is good as gold. And it looks like a new bike. And that's what we're sort of aiming for when we started restoring this, to make it look like a new bike. Because finding good XLs is very, very hard now because they're all thrashed and trashed. And thinking about it, this is what we were making out of, just bits, of, bits and pieces of bike. There's the other tank over there. And So forth. We've got a um, it's a 500 engine there. Maybe we can visit that lot sometime later. There's another XL there, and I've got another frame at home. I saw that movie once. But yeah, we're we're pretty stoked. No noises it shouldn't have, and it really looks the part. It cost a bit more than we budgeted it for. $300. It cost three hundred dollars for the stickers. I'm scared of adding it up. <laughs> no, I've got it all in a book, don't worry. I'll finish putting that book together and I'll give it to you. Sounds typically Japanese, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Take good care of yourselves. You're happy? Very happy. Beautiful. Next thing is the uh, little Amigo. Yes, the Amigo. We're going to do that. That's an easy job. We don't have to pull the engine part on that. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this. Take good care of yourselves. I'll see you around.